episode is for anyone who's been bullied, has been the bully, or has seen someone else being bullied. About 42% of kids have been bullied while online, with one in four being verbally attacked more than once. About 35% of kids have been threatened online. About 58% of kids and teens have reported that something mean has been said about them or to them online. 77% of students have admitted to being the victim of bullying. One out of every four kids will be bullied sometime throughout their adolescence. 78% of teens who commit suicide were being bullied at school or online. I think that bullying is a big problem among girls for the emotional and verbal points of view. Especially with like people my age and girls. Like it's a lot about like verbal bullying, like putting people down. I've seen the the lasting effects that verbal and um, sometimes physical bullying has had on, on the girls that are in my youth group, and um, it's not pretty. I'd be really scared. I wouldn't want to go back to school. If someone was purposely tripping me or pushing me, it would hurt. It would, it would drain your self-confidence as well, knowing someone can, you let them do it to you, you don't know how to stop it and you just live in fear, always looking behind your back, seeing where they are, what are they gonna do next to me. Internet and Facebook and all, all the social media sites have made it a lot easier to, to bully people without them even knowing about it, because you can like, you know, message all your friends and be like, oh, this person did this, or say mean things about them without that person ever knowing. I was bullied. From grade three to six, I can remember spending every recess sitting up against an old garbage can in the playground, watching everybody else. The really sad part about my story wasn't so much that I was being left out, but it's that I actually believed I deserved it. I was told that I wasn't wanted and that I wasn't good enough. And I felt like I was alone. But if the statistics are true, I wasn't. One in four teens will experience some form of bullying. And it's getting even worse now that we can go online and don't even have to have the nerve to say something to someone's face. Maybe you're being bullied and you feel like you're the only one, but we want you to know that you're not alone. Today we're gonna to hear from Chelsea, Sangita, and Nikki and hear about their experiences and how they overcame. I struggled a lot um, just as a teen with bullying, with depression. And my friend had went and posted it online to Facebook. He decided that I would be the brunt of all his jokes. I hated it, like I hated myself. I looked a little closer, saw that I was circled, and kind of looked down and I was like, oh, well there's a whole bunch of people that like this, but why would they like it if this is something that's making fun of me and bullying me? up losing my auntie to cancer and it was a tough time for me so my friends and I we just wanted to go outside have some fun they're like hey let's go take pictures we'll go and make Chelsea feel a little bit better and so went out in the dead of winter and we ended up taking a jumping picture which was kind of like high school musical and we were all lined up and had a, we had a lot of fun doing it and my friend had went and posted it online to Facebook. I was tagged a couple days later and I was like, oh, well, it's just the same picture as what my friend had put up. And uh, I looked a little closer, saw that I was circled and kind of looked down and I was like, oh, well, there's a whole bunch of people that like this, but why would they like it if this is something that's making fun of me and bullying me? I met this guy, he was in my class, and we got into a bit of a fight or something like that. I don't even remember what it was about, who was standing where in line. 
But from that day on, he decided that I would be the brunt of all his jokes. I struggled a lot um, just as a teen with, with bullying, with depression, um, with family struggles. Um, my parents at the time were in the brink of a divorce. I kind of looked a little bit down at the comments and I'm like, okay, well, there's, there's 10 comments on here. Like, I wonder what they've said. And as I read further and further, I didn't realize that there was 10 comments. There was 400 comments to it. And as I read through almost every single comment, I read to myself, oh, she should kill herself. I'm a pretty small person, so they'll call me names and be like, you're so skinny, you need to eat a hamburger, um, you have chicken legs, like, can I fit my hands around your waist? And all these things, and they think they're joking, but um, sometimes they don't realize how much of what they say stays with the person, and it, those comments stick with me. Sometimes I just wake up and I'm like, oh, remember that time when someone called you that name or said you were anorexic, and it, it really hurts. He would make fun of how I looked, how I talked, how I dressed, what I said, what I didn't say. I wasn't physically harmed, but it was more um, people not accepting me for who I am and making fun of my hair and making fun of my, like the way I was as a person. And I hated it, like I hated myself. Finally, I just kind of spiraled into a depression almost. And I didn't want to go to school for the first couple of weeks. I didn't want to show up and make myself kind of look prettier than I usually did. And you know, I just didn't want to do anything anymore. I didn't want to go to my classes. So at first I tried laughing and you try making jokes back and you kind of look to your friends for some help, like how would everybody doesn't laugh because that's actually really hurtful. Um, and I got to the point where I was like, well, I guess I can't do anything about it, so I'll just pretend I don't care. My mom had had told me that my dad was having an affair and and she was going to depression and I was going into depression because, you know, it was hard to cope with family and with school and bullying that was happening in school as well. A couple months down the line, I was sexually assaulted by a grade 12 in, or a senior in the school and I I was, all I was doing was walking to class and he came up and he grabbed me and he pushed me up against the fence and I tried to push him off and he just wouldn't, wouldn't let me go. And I felt like at least he didn't get the satisfaction of seeing me get upset. I still, for three years, heard somebody speak lies about me and saw my close friends laugh about it. And I just wanted to disappear. And every time I would, every class that I went to, I would make sure I sit like right at the back. And I didn't want anyone to, to notice me or know that I'm there because I didn't want to be there. I just wanted to disappear. It took me about two weeks after the effect to kind of say, hey, this is what's happened to me. I've been assaulted and I don't know what to do about it. And it ended up with me kind of going back into that depression and I ended up cutting myself due to the experience of the bullying and the assault and I didn't realize how far I was going into this depression and I needed something to kind of get me out of it. I am alone. Nobody likes me. I'm not good enough. Things will never get better. The sad part about my story is that even when I was being bullied, I believed the lies that people were saying to me, that I wasn't good enough. But the truth was that God still loved me, He cared about me, and He was giving me my identity. Like 
I feel that bullying is, it's its kind of like a protective mechanism. And I think that um, a lot of bullies out there, um, they're dealing with insecurity. And so then they go out and they're like, well, if I put this person down, then that'll make myself look better because everyone will see that person's flaws and not be focusing on mine. It makes them feel like they have power over that person um, and makes them feel better about themselves. We don't know what homes they come from. You know, we don't know about their upbringing. We don't know what's what's causing them um, to act out in that way. So there may be issues at home. There may be like self self esteem or insecurity. There's a place of hurt in their lives. There's something that's going on in their own lives that makes them uh, feel like they need to act out and hurt other people. Often because that person feels weak, and so by putting someone else down, it gives. It makes them feel like they have power over that person. A lot of times the bullies are treated like villains, but I think what needs to be done is get to the root of the problem and figure out what is causing that problematic behavior. Healthy and happy people don't have don't want to hurt other people. And so, uh, you know, I think all of us in this life walk um, through some really hard battles. And I think sometimes, well, when we're walking through those things, we, we lash out at others and, and um, we hurt others. So through that, I, I couldn't make it stop, and I couldn't go anywhere. So I thought, well, maybe I started thinking about suicide, because that was a way I could escape. Because it couldn't hurt him. It was pretty obvious that nothing I said hurt him. And I couldn't make him go away. So then I could go away. But I knew okay, God has a plan for me, and I know somewhere deep inside that God values me and loves me, and these thoughts I'm having aren't true. So if I can't get rid of myself, then maybe God can just take me. So a lot of junior high, that's what I prayed, that God would just take me, take me away. People would just uh, point at me and, and 
and talk and stare and, and call me names. And I didn't I really understand why, because I didn't do anything to them. And I knew I wasn't a bad person, so I just didn't understand why they were so mean to me. And there was really nothing I did about it either, except for isolating myself. I, I really, truly believed that I was ugly for the longest time. We ended up printing out the, uh, the photo and all the comments and highlighted every one that we knew went to our school. And we went to the principal and said, hey, this is what's happening. And she's like, well, I'm sorry, it happened off of school property. I can't do anything about it. And I was like, well, maybe I'll go to a guidance counselor and they can kind of help me through it. Three guidance counselors I went to said, oh, there's no bullying on here. There's nothing wrong with this picture. I carried a lot of anger. I carried a lot of anger towards this guy, but more so towards myself. And by the time I went into high school, I had come to believe everything he had said about me, that there was something wrong with me, and there's something wrong with my body, and there's something wrong with how I talked and how I walked and how I thought, and, and I just transferred all that anger to myself, and I carried that with me for a really long time, um, and it really damaged how I viewed myself, and I kept it all to myself though, because that was my secret and it was mine to deal with. And I felt embarrassed to share that with anyone because it felt like a weakness to admit that I needed help or that I couldn't just figure it out on my own. And so I tried to figure it out on my own for a really long time, for years. And um, I would pretend like I had it all together and I'd be feeling really good about myself. And one little comment would set the whole thing falling down again. And I'm back at the bottom again thinking, I thought I'd dealt with this, I thought I'd fixed this, I thought I'd thought my way out of it, and I hadn't. I believe it's important to, to speak to someone. There are so many kids out there who have been dealing with bullying for um, weeks, months, sometimes years, and parents don't even know because, you know, kids may be um, embarrassed, you know, mortified, ashamed, you know, or don't want to stress out mom or dad any further. Talk to someone and get help. A teacher or a youth leader um, or your parent or um, an older friend, but someone who can walk with you through this process. Phone lines, like kids help phone line, you know, Red Cross also has, like, there's, there's, there's PrevNet. There's so many different resources for kids and teens. Um, to reach out to. If people don't talk about it, it can often get to a point where like, it can mentally scar you and, like, and people can live with the scars from that for the rest of their life. No person should have to live with that. It's not right, it's wrong. So today's lesson, we're gonna be doing uh, some uh, stage combat and we're dealing specifically with hair pulling, okay? Going to school can sometimes feel a lot like going to drama class. You're gonna have someone's hand on your head. Drama with friends, drama with teachers, drama with schoolwork. It feels like school is just a setting for a play. At the end of the day though, we all know that drama is just pretend. Is anyone's hair actually being pulled? And no but don't think of bullying as just another kind of drama in your life. Bullying is real, not pretend. If you have been a victim of bullying, check out these options for help. I journal a lot, so I like write it down, and I also talk to God a lot, and He has helped me through that, and I look at Bible verses, and I just realize how beautiful I am, and I look at it, and then I've got close friends who are like, you are gorgeous, don't listen to what those people are saying. When I started to turn to God and His truth about me, rather than worrying so much what other people thought, I found freedom. If we're being bullied, 
We need to know that we can go to Him for the truth instead of believing the lies that we're being told. And if we're feeling like we need to bully someone else, we can find our acceptance in Him instead of in the laughter that we create from putting someone else down. And God slowly brought really good people into my life that could speak truth to me. I remember the first time I thought, maybe I should tell my mom. Maybe my parents should know how I've been feeling about myself. I remember going to a Seventh-day Seventh Slumber concert, and the lead singer, he was like, you know, I've done drugs, I've cut, I've done everything in the book. And I came to Jesus, and he freed me from what I was. And he had invited people to come down to the stage and give up yourself to Jesus and I had already given myself to Jesus when I was a young girl when I was in day camp and I was like you know maybe I can renounce myself. I still feel God uprooting lies that are still hiding in dark places and know that he's bringing me to wholeness and to healing not to just pretend that I'm okay and then have major meltdowns every few months over a small thing but to actually be okay and to actually believe the truth that God speaks over me. So I was in tears and I like fell to my knees and I was like, please just take me, take me as I am and kind of help me fix my heart and go on with life. And right there I could feel the emotion and I could feel all my pain just kind of flutter away. And you know, I felt, I re felt relief afterwards. What's important is that how God sees you and not how people see you, if God made you, I'm sure he, he didn't make a mistake, right? God is growing truth in a place where there were lies and bringing healing where there was a lot of brokenness so that I can be whole and I can be healed. That's real healing. It's not pretending you're okay. It's not the power of positive thinking. It's looking for where there was damage and finding that and looking for where there was death and finding life. God sees the beautiful person that he made, um, the perfect person that he made, and the world may not have enough wisdom to see that. And so, you know, like we need to embrace who we are and the beauty that God gave us. When we remember that we are daughters of God, how does our perspective change on this topic? Well, if we're daughters of God, then that means we're actually brothers and sisters with Christ. And Jesus was bullied like nobody else. He actually died on a cross and did nothing to deserve it. There is no bullying worse than that. What that means is that he understands what you're going through. The Bible says that he sees every tear that you cry and he stores them up and keeps them because he cares for you. So when you feel alone, when you feel like nobody cares, remember that he will never leave you or forsake you. For the bully, Ask yourself, why do I feel the need to put other people down? And last for the bystander, what's keeping you from speaking up to defend somebody who's being bullied? Did you know that if you stand up to a bully, it takes generally less than 10 seconds for them to stop bullying? It's worth making the effort. Perfect love drives out fear. He makes me brave. I am not alone. It's cool to be kind. I wanted to start seeing myself the way that God saw me and really wanted my heart to reflect Christ and nothing else. Whenever I'm feeling upset, I always remember that God made me beautiful and he thinks that I'm perfect. You need to stop bullying that person because it's really harming them and putting them down and you need to find other ways of letting go of your insecurities. You know, it wasn't just me believing in myself, it was me, uh, it was God entering into my life. I want to pick you with chorus consists of 50 children that come together every Wednesday, we sing, we perform, and Flo had found us and wanted to make a hateless song due to anti-bullying. And we ended up recording the children's part for Hateless for her, and on my 18th birthday, I was in the music video for it after a concert, and I kind of told Flo my story, and Flo had ended up saying, hey, like, this is why I wrote the song, to help girls like you, to help everyone like you, to kind of move on through life and realize that you are love. It's 
a song about making a difference. It's a song about love and promoting acceptance. I've always promised myself that when I sing music, I want to sing music with substance and I want to take what is the desire in my heart, what is my passion, and use it to make a difference. Hi, my name is Girish Manuel, and I'm the creator of Micah's Super Vlog. Here with me is Stuart Hannibal. He's another animator on the show. We just got started on the second episode, so uh, why don't you come on in and I'll show you how it's made. There's a lot that goes into making a cartoon, and it has to be put into a story that's fun and has a lesson along with it. We just finished creating the script and the storyboard, and now we're getting ready to record with our voice actors. When that's done, it's to start the preparation for animation and start developing the backgrounds. For episode two, we're handling the topic of pride. Micah gets cast in a school play, and then it starts to get to his head a little bit. He learns the hard way that pride comes before the fall. The lesson being taught here is that no one is worthy of worship other than God. And also that you don't need to obtain fame or popularity in order to affirm that you are loved. God cares and loves for us no matter who you are. What we hope to achieve with Micah's Super Vlog is to make a funny, entertaining show for kids that's grounded in the truth that comes from the Word of God. Thank you so much for those who supported the first episode of Micah's Super Vlog. We are really happy with the result and we got some super feedback. Now, as you can tell, we're working really hard on making the second episode even better. So please continue to partner with us, and we look forward to bringing the second episode to you in the coming months. Mm -hmm.